Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Suma Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today we're speaking about masculine and feminine energy, yin and yang, animus and anima. Now I'm saying yin and yang to just basically simplify it for you, all right? So yang is the masculine energy. It's much more going forward into the world. It's very purposeful. It's very guided. The feminine energy is one of yin, which is yielding, receptive, and very creative and imaginative. You can kind of understand these two basic energies. The reason why I want to speak about animus and anima is because it's helped numerous clients of mine and myself transform. All right. So in Jung's time, you know, gender was a very binary thing, and it was a very radical way of seeing you know, gender as these two kind of ideologies, right, of animus and anima, meaning that a man had an anima, a feminine side, and a woman had an animus, a masculine side, within them. It's still a little bit reductionist, however, I love looking at this as a framework, since it's just, it's super helpful in, in this quasi Jung approach, you know, it's just helped me and it's helped many people that I know, so let's get right into it. So if I were to put a statistic on where I am right now, let's say I'm I'm 60% masculine and 40% feminine, if I were to put a statistic on it. However, you know, you've got to adapt the principles based on what you feel and what you need, right? So what does a wounded animus look like, right? Wounded masculine. It looks like a lack of trust. It looks dominating, controlling, demanding, overachieving, manipulative, reactive, aggressive, closed off and the wounded anima or the wounded feminine is associated with you know people pleasing feeling powerless confused validation seeking desperate fears being abandoned unworthy feels shame struggle saying no now the fully integrated and divine masculine is present aware structured hold space is stoicism with that transformation decisive discerning has a clear purpose and the divine feminine is expressive intuitive driven exploring the mysteries or the non-rational uh, connected with love compassion creation free-flowing and radiance very ra radiant woman in the female psyche the animus is generally associated with the father figure or a group of male individuals and in the male psyche it's associated with the mother figure a group of female individuals Normally, both of these have as a positive and a negative side. Or you could simply look at it as dormant, activated, or um, integrated, and the shadow side, or the dark side, you could say. What are the dark sides or the negative aspects of male animus in a woman? All right, she'll be very strict, very close-minded, very controlling. She'll tell you things like, this is meaningless, you won't amount to anything, this is useless. It'll be very difficult for her to be open-minded. The positive male characteristics in a woman is, is someone who takes initiative, is determined, she's creative, she's very courageous in certain situations, she steps forward and she speaks her mind. The anima in the male psyche, a lot of guys suppress this. Right, so it's very important for males to embrace their feminine side or women to embrace their masculine side. Having a fully integrated personality will help you to individuate, as Carl Jung calls it. Now let's talk about the male's anima or the male's feminine side, right? So the anima has very negative traits. If the anima is rejected or deformed, he becomes a moody guy, he becomes really possessive, uh, tenderness just becomes effeminate. His imagination becomes fantasizing. The man in this sense, in the negative anima, he degrades his thinking to become this kind of weak, opinionated kind of guy, right? He just starts to bicker and moan and complain. And, oh, why didn't I do this? Or, oh, blah, 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 nah, 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 nah. right? That guy, right, who's constantly complaining, gossiping, moaning. However, this anima has positive traits, right? When he's being able to be tender and related and committed and has loyalty and fidelity and friendship and, and has love and compassion in himself and is able to be, you know, imaginative and romantic and creative and has a sense of aesthetics and 
is intuitive, is intuitively tuned in to his inner world and to spirituality. You'll notice a lot of cold or dark, uh, closed off men are very open minded and they're definitely not open to spiritual concepts and things like that. However, on the other side, you have the kind of soy boy in the culture, right? The kind of softy. And he, this is a guy who neglects his masculine tendencies. You'll feel the, a man with anima possession, right? You'll feel like this, these women have control over me. I don't have direction in my life. I don't follow an emotional guidance system, right? This is a man who's spineless, right? Whereas if you are fully connected with that, you'll notice your heart, your courage comes from the anima. It's all about authentic expression, right? So there are four stages of anima. The first is Eve. All right, so basically, this is a man who sees women as sexual objects, right? He's focused mainly on the erotic and the sexual, the biology and the reproduction nature of women. And once he goes beyond that stage, he notices the Helen character, right? The Helen of Troy, a very romantic, creative, kind of integrates an aesthetic level, and a woman who receives individual values, right? And then you go into the stage of spiritual devotion or the Virgin Mary, the Mother Mary stage, right? Spiritual motherhood, a free agency. She's very virtuous, but this is also coming from the male standpoint of rigidity and dogma, right? So he kind of shies away from things that are authentic to him and kind of lets his dogmatic judgments rule over him. So a man ruled by the Mary archetype or the third stage might be okay in the external world, but he's still suffering and can't access his internal world. So his dogma kind of overrides his ability to go inwards. And then you have stage four, which is all about the embodiment of wisdom. All right, this is Sophia. This is a transcending the holy and the pure and being able to... This is the ability to embrace women as unique individuals who are capable of both good and bad things. Right, it's just in a partner, you'll notice that, you know, this person will have access to his unconscious mind, but also be able to use his conscious mind. All right, so once you've integrated the final stage of anima as a man, what you'll do is you'll be able to add your masculine logos, your logic, to the feminine eros, or love, that sexuality spirit, right? So you'll have a mind and heart, a desire and creativity link. You'll have a synchronicity. Right? You have a mind-heart coherence, which is what the flow state is really about. So once you have that integrated feminine aspect within yourself and you've gone through all of these stages, you'll notice that you'll slowly start developing a very integrated masculine character for yourself. Because out of the feminine soil, the masculine becomes stronger. Basically, think of it like it's adding spice, right? It's adding a flavor to the dynamic of your personality. The first thing to avoid animal possession as a man is to accept and value your emotions as valid. The next thing is to develop your nurturing side. All right, take care of something, take care of an animal, right? Take care of your friends, right? This kind of ability, as well as chunking out that masculine persona, how you are with your boys, right? And getting honest with what's really true to you, the authenticity and getting you know, touch with the anima. An undeveloped anima if you have an undeveloped enema, I would also talk to older women or even, um, you know, young women, right? So being able to not see women as just sexual objects, seeing them as just human beings, right? So this is very important for a man to go on that journey, to be able to really understand that these are human beings, right? To go beyond the first stage of the animal. You know, again, this is an enhancer to your masculinity. So don't think of it, oh man, I'm being, you know, I'm being soft because I'm exploring my feminine. Don't let the conditioning kind of take you out of this, right? This is about adding femininity, again, is the soil from which your masculinity grows, and masculinity is the soil from which femininity grows. Now let's look at the animus. So this is for the feminine man or the woman. A woman with the animus the masculine energy is someone who has direction, someone who has goals and is able to rationally understand it, right? Someone who is very aware of what is internal to her, aware of her own desires, aware of her own wants, right? So then you have the stage one of the animus is the bad boy or the, the man of mere physical power, right? Just strength, physical power, adventure, danger, the bad boy, right? So in a relationship, a woman with this, this kind of animus would 
would be looking for that bad boy archetype because she would want to play out the damsel in distress. All right, so she is seeking a man for her personal and physical safety. It's completely relevant, right, in certain cases. However, you want to move out of stage one into stage two, which is the warrior or the leader. So you're seeing the man now as an example who is capable of acting forward in the world. And you're basically you're following the father figure or you're, you're following the external example of what the man looks like, right? So it's the source and initiative of romance as well. You read a lot of romance novels as this guy who's the lover, right? The man of action or the man of romance, all right? So there's that second stage. So in the third stage, you know, it's all about the man of the word or the shaman, the teacher, right, essentially. So he's the professor or the man of opinion. So this is a man of his own words. And a woman in this stage is now she's able to step into this third stage and she can now assert her own worldview. She has her own opinion. She can now make things happen. She's going out and making things happen, right? She can start to make things happen, but she still, she doesn't feel that internal connection to her own feminine, right? So she feels a little bit like, oh man, like, I wish I had this internal connection with myself, right? And in the stage four, we have the mediator, right? Who mediates between the ego and the self. So this is like your inner Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus, right? The messenger of the gods. Someone who is fully developed and in their male archetype or their own ego, they have a fully developed ego and if they have a fruitful unconscious mind. So they're able to have all of this chaos of the unconscious mind have a structure or a container, right? So he's able to hold space. He's able to bring structure to the chaos, right? And it's basically going from the unconscious to the conscious mind, right? He's transcending, he's bringing heaven to earth and earth to heaven. So this is also the aspect of really embracing that rationality, but then also finding that nice yin-yang balance within, right? So the king, warrior, magician, lover archetypes in the animus, and in the anima, the queen, priestess, magician, lover, right? So once you've fully integrated all of these elements, you are coming from a standpoint where you're fully integrated, you're balanced in your male and female uh, approach, and you're understanding, like, you can also go on an intuitive inner journey as you're meditating. And you can ask yourself the questions of, where do I feel dormant? Do I feel dormant in my warrior energy as a man, where I feel like I'm not really taking enough action in the world? Now you can find ways to really activate that through different ways, right? And there's many things that we can do here. However, normally, this psyche is kind of set in stone. We can try and change it as much as we want and they will just be like that's like deep character development over time this is like identity level change right so it's not going to happen overnight that you change your personality but by doing the inner work you can actually create a foundation and a framework for that and this is why this is such a beautiful concept right so the king is an integration of the warrior magician and the lover all together being the king you know handling your kingdom getting things done also being very nurturing and having that ability to be the teacher as well at the same time, being a man of your word, having the tools there. The magician is like the creator, right? They are basically delving into the mystical realms a little bit more. And the lover is all about noticing the beauty in the world, the gratitude, and having an interest in the arts as well, bringing that lover archetype and really being able to be that lover in your relationship with a woman and integrating that. And as a woman, you know, you're embracing that Mother Mary archetype, but then also the kind of embracing the inner eros or that sexuality aspect of you as well, right? To be the queen, you truly need to embody the priestess, the magician, the lover, the eros, right? All that together, really being able to bring that and integrate that, just like we have integrated the masculine. There's also men's work, but then there's also women's work. I've done a lot of men's work in my past where I've activated my own yang energy because I've been naturally yin a lot of my life. I've been very naturally unconsciously exploring a lot of the feminine archetypes. But that does not mean that I didn't do the inner work for my feminine because that's an important aspect as well, right? Like for instance, I remember doing the most awkward thing 
in terms of really activating this part of me where I was like, I was moving my pelvis, my hips around. And I naturally felt like I had much more of a sway in my hips. And you know, I notice a lot of a Latin men can do this when they're dancing, right? They can incorporate that hips where a lot of the lower sexual energy is stored, right? The Like being able to really come into this work and be able to explore my embodiment as a man has helped me to shape me further and really made me explore different elements that I didn't know were there, right? So as a man, what are some ways that you can activate your inner feminine? There are many things you could do. You know, I love ecstatic dance, exploring that embodiment aspect and being able to express yourself creatively can definitely help you with that. So exploring things like, you know, deep meditation, stillness, being around nature, creating art, drawing, painting, dancing, these kinds of things, you know, they really bring out the inner feminine and the man. As a woman, how can you bring out your inner masculine and do more work there? Um, start lifting heavy weights, right? That's a great one. But also just generally creating boundaries and being able to speak to people and being able to say no and standing up for yourself, right? That's a deep aspect and really creating a solid personality or persona. A lot of times, you know, we get trapped in the ego and the persona, so we don't really do the other kind of elements of the work and they get trapped underneath this mask. You just want to basically get rid of the mask and the persona, but also work on the authenticity. It's nice to fluff up the persona and make it look good and aesthetic and all this kind of stuff. But if your inner world isn't activated there, right, they both work together, inner world and external world, right? So being able to consolidate, bring together, integrate these dark aspects of yourself, your shadow aspects, but also the parts of you that may be addicted or overemphasized. So the addicted lover is not a positive aspect of the lover archetype in the masculine, right? It's, it's over craving, it's over desperate. So then you want to just find the balance and the midpoint and really be able to use all of these archetypes in moderation. And this is where you're going to fully step into your beingness and in your power, both as a man or as a woman. Really start to ask yourself, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of women nowadays who are much more in their masculine nature and that's okay that's great but it's also important for you as a woman to step into your softness and in your feminine nature as well right to be have a holistic well-rounded personality and as a man if you're more in your yang nature you're like the kind of tough guy right there's nothing wrong with being macho in that sense but then also you want to work on certain aspects of your feminine nature so you have that nurturing attitude. You could be a good father or you could be a good leader in a sense to be able to create empathy and reach out and like create a tribe, right? You need all of these aspects together to be able to create a fully honest personality and you want to be the loving king, not the tyrant king, right? So the alpha male is like the king who is, right? If you take Martin Luther King is a great example of that. Martin Luther King, word up, you know? He was a great example of that. He had a movement, but he was dominating with love. He was, he was not dominating out of fear. You also want to be you know, the woman who is receptive, but also able to step into her divine feminine nature and in her own power. You know, once you can see and incorporate all these different elements, you will notice that I'm starting to individuate and really starting to grow and develop my character, character development, right? And this is a lot of the work that I do is in this field of character development. So if you are interested, shoot me a message and we can work one-on-one -on -one together to truly create the best kind of character for you and how you can bring that out and awaken that into the world, all right? I did a lot of character work throughout my whole life. I started in the theater space. My new book, TPM, is all about that, right? Being able to incorporate the acting techniques but actually physically tapping into that authenticity as well to truly embody your higher self, your best self, all right? So have an amazing day. I hope this video helped you out. Share it with a friend. Hit that subscribe button. May the flow be with you and stay legend.